This may be the most consistent series of movies of all time. Hello everyone, my name's Jim and welcome back to My Movie Obsession, a place for film obsessors. If you're a geeky movie fan and you love to talk about movies, please consider subscribing and we can discuss our movie obsession. So it's time to talk about Toy Story 4, guys. Yes, the movie that no one wanted, but ended up that once you've seen it, everyone in the world wanted it. So I'm actually fascinated at how they Pixar have handled Toy Story. Yeah, they've made this franchise that just never kind of the consistency never slipped away. You know, it never was a bad movie in this franchise and they always managed to take what they created in the first film, recreate it and develop it. And Toy Story 3, you were just like, no, there's no way you can develop on this. There's no way we're going to come back for more. And they've developed on it and it's amazing. This is the most human Toy Story movie. And that's a bit of a strange thing to say, but it is, you know, in this film Woody starts to experience more human emotions and more desires and more hopes and dreams of his own than he's ever had. And, you know, it really is the film where they kind of transcend being toys. Um, Woody is no longer just a toy, he now thinks about himself a lot more in this film. And it doesn't come across as selfish, I think this is kind of the natural progression. We had to have these toys, they've been through so much. Had to have these toys start to think about themselves once and not just children. And that happens in this film, but don't get me wrong, Woody still, you know, he still really, really loves Bonnie, he really, really loves the memory of Andy, but he's kind of at an existential crisis in his life, and that's crazy because we're talking about a cowboy doll, but that's what it is, guys. And obviously, Tom Hanks comes through and makes you advise of Woody, and Woody really is the star of this movie. It really is Woody's journey, and it really is an emotional one. And, you know, I just never thought that you could get more emotional than Toy Story 3, but you kind of do in Toy Story 4. One of the things that I think has made the Toy Story series so strong is that every movie we introduce new characters that stand up to the old characters. You know, in Toy Story 2 we got Jesse, who stands up to the toys that were already there. Toy Story 3, we got the toys in the, you know, in the daycare centre and, and this and that. I can't remember all their names, but they stood up. They were, they were good characters, they were memorable. That's what this series does so well, they bring in toys and then by the end of the film they feel like old friends, they feel like characters who have been there since the beginning of Toy Story, they feel so familiar. Now this film of course introduces a main new toy, Forky, played by Tony Hale. This is literally a fork guys, a fork with eyes attached and little flimsy arms. But by the end of the film, he hits you right in the fields. How does a fork hit you right in the feels and become one of possibly your favourite Toy Story characters. Pixar, how do you do this to us? Forky is such a fun character and his relationship with Woody, how they get closer, how Forky learns, how important he is to Bonnie, just lovely little moments, he's just such an adorable character. And just, I think they just wanted to make the most rubbish looking toy ever just to show that the little things in life can be what children love and that does feel relevant. These films really understand childhood because back when you were a child you probably did have toys that were rubbish but you preferred them to your good toys because they just filled that emotional connection. But watch out Forky because Bonnie might get bored of you because she gets bored of some of her toys in this film and you are only a fork mate. You're nothing special. She thinks she's special now but she might fall in love with a spoon. Keanu Reeves absolutely kills it in this film. He has not been this funny since Bill and Ted. This is hilarious. Duke Kaboom is one of the funniest, most creative, most genius characters in all of Toy Story. This character, guys, this kind of evil Knievel toy, Keanu Reeves' voice just is perfect for it. And you, you hear him Keanu Reeves do a voiceover and you're kind of like, how has he never done voiceover work before? He's kind of natural to it. And he brings so much personality and humour to this role. And it's just a fascinating character, this evil Knievel character who, um, believes in himself but doesn't believe in himself and he's always crashing and it's just absolutely hilarious whenever that character's on screen. You know, and it's just a wonderful, again, a character that stands up to all the characters we know and love from Toy Story and possibly the most funny character in all of Toy Story. Well done, Keanu. You're on a roll, mate. Whoa. Now, Gabby Gabby, played by Christina Hendricks, is such a great character. What a wonderful character. Again, a character that stands up to other Toy Story characters, a character you grow 
uh, to kind of be intimidated by and then you grow to kind of um, enjoy seeing her on screen. I don't want to spoil too much. But, you know, she's kind of a haunting looking doll who, you know, you meet in this antique shop and she's protected by dummies, evil looking dummies. So there's kind of this creepy vibe to it. But she's not all she seems, that's all I'll say. She's a great character. Christina Hendricks, a nice little voice role here. And just, you know, it's a nice little story. And again, Toy Story manages to once again weave stories around themes of childhood and what we all know is true. You know, so many true to life childhood experiences we see resonated on the screen. We remember our childhood seeing these stories that Pixar just continues to create flawlessly. As I said, I really like the antique shop setting. It really helps to see other worlds where toys exist. I like this because we see that toys exist in the fairgrounds, you know, the, the toys hanging up for people to win. Those toys are alive as well. Toys in the antique store, a creepy setting. Toys who are lost, who are on the road. You know, you see toys in so many different areas and it just shows all the different lives of toys outside of the child's bedroom. Now this is Woody's movie, so Buzz kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit in this, I feel myself. I'm really hoping if there's a Toy Story 5 we focus more on Buzz. He is great in this. He is awesome, and you love Tim Allen in the role. But he, my only flaw I guess if I could pick out a flaw with this movie is that Buzz, I wish there was more from him. And Jesse, Jesse doesn't really do much in this film. But you know, it's Woody's story, and it's, Buzz is kind of there as much as he needs to be. He's not pushed to the curb, he just, I just wish he was in it a little bit more. The pace of this movie is phenomenal, it does not let up, guys. I sat there watching it, I was like, it immediately gets into it, and it never stops. This movie's never boring for one second. And it really does feel like a celebration of everything we know of Toy Story. Just designed to have this constant fun on screen, constant chases and constant getting into adventures and trouble which we know Toy Story 4. And it's probably the most go, go, go of all Toy Story movies. And it makes you think there could be more. I would not be against Toy Story 5. I really wouldn't. If you can just have this fast paced Toy Story adventure which shows you so many avenues you can go with it. This could just go on and on. Tom Hanks and Tim Allen could be voicing Woody and Buzz. On their blooming, in their blooming walking sticks, getting their walking sticks into the studio. It's possible. This movie is very sentimental and nostalgic. It does contend with Toy Story 3. I feel like this one of the most ones in the entire series, I and mean, the others obviously really do. But this really understands childhood. All the children in this film, you, it, it's such a depiction of childhood understood, you know, and it's not even a film focused entirely on. Uh, toys and childhood, and there's other elements to it. There's finding your place in the world, there's moving on when you've lost what you thought was uh, defined you. There's all of that kind of stuff for Woody, and you know, and it's just lots of different themes. And I, I did really wish there was a theme for Buzz in this movie because it seems like there's only one theme for him, and it's a little bit of a comedic one. He doesn't really get involved in the serious stuff in the film. And I wish I could have seen that, but again, it is Woody's movie. This cowboy really deserves his kind of moment in the sun. And if we're going to see Toy Story 5, let's give Buzz his moment in the sun. To infinity and beyond! So what do you guys think of Toy Story 4? I don't know where I'd rank it in the series. I'm actually going to do a Toy Story ranking video very, very soon, so I have to decide. But what do you guys think? Did you love it? What was your favourite moment? Do you think it's the best of the series, the best sequel? Where do you rank it? Or do you think it's overrated and do you not like it? Maybe there's some people out there who don't like it. It's a shame this movie is actually struggling at the box office because it's just been universally acclaimed. And it's not really struggling because when you say struggle in Pixar and Disney terms, it only made 100 billion zillion zillion zillion. We were hoping for a zillion killion zillion billion. Da, 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 da. You can't really have a box office failure when it comes to Toy Story. But let me know what you think of the movie in the comments down below, guys. Please consider subscribing if you love talking about geeky movie stuff. Let's talk about our movie obsession. Please come and join the community and I will see you guys next time.